So let's talk about some brain basics. Lesson number one, membranes. Now, there's a fancy word in anatomy for the membranes inside your skull. It's called the meninges. Meninges is plural for the word meninx, which means membrane. So, the meninges are the membranes, specifically the membranes inside your skull. Now, let's start with number one, the dura mater. Dura mater, interestingly, has two layers. Now, I'm not drawing this perfectly well here because this first layer is called the periosteal dura mater. It's called periosteal, peri, around the osteum, the bone. So, the periosteal dura lines the skull on the inside. Your skull has a tough, fibrous, fascial, membranous lining that you, it's really tough. Like it's built into the bone, you have to pull it away if you were trying to demonstrate it. So, periosteal dura, periosteal dura, mater. Now, we use the word mater when we're speaking of the meninges, and mater just means matter or stuff. So the periosteal dura mater is the tough, the durable stuff lining the skull. Periosteal dura. Now, it took me a while to understand this. I don't know why, I should have just read a book. But there's another layer of dura, of the dura mater, and it's called the meningeal layer of the dura. So the meningeal, the membrane layer of the membrane, meningeal dura mater. So the tough matter that's in one more layer and in contact with the other meninges, particularly the arachnoid. But for now, we'll just say, okay, we have a second layer of the dura mater, the meningeal layer. These two layers are adherent to each other, and this is adherent to the skull. So this is all kind of stuck to itself. It's supposed to be. And I find this double layer here particularly interesting because your brain has to drain. Drain what? It has to drain the cerebrospinal fluid, and it has to drain the venous blood that served the brain and is being returned to the heart center. So how does the blood get back? We don't have normal veins lining our skull. Instead, we have what we call sinuses. And the sinuses are little pathways in between these two dural layers, in between the periosteal dura mater and the meningeal dura mater, there are pathways or sinuses. And those pathways, those gaps, you know, spaces, little gaps, little tubular uh, spaces in between the two layers of dura are the venous pathways that drain the brain. So that would be a whole other video to describe the sinuses. But for now, just get it in your head. Ha! It's already in your head that there are spaces, pathways, between the two layers of the dura mater that enable the blood to flow out of your skull. Now, what's our next uh, meningeal layer? We're going to call it the arachnoid mater arachnoid. Now, where have we heard that word before? Like arachnophobia, spider fear. So, the arachnoid is the spider-like or, say, web-like or spidery membrane. Now, it also is adherent here. So, we have a stacking of membranes inside of our skull 
We're going to use this green marker to, to de delineate the arachnoid. And of course, this is a cross section. And where's the brain? Well, it's wrapped in these membranes. It's wrapped in the arachnoid. So I could really go like, go like this. And that would be an accurate drawing, too, because what we have is a drapery, a membranous, diaphanous curtain that, that covers the brain. And it doesn't really, it goes down between the hemispheres. It does that. But in general, it just drapes over the top of the brain and the sides, all around it, actually, and creates this this diaphanous web. Now, the arachnoid is adherent to the meningeal dura, but it's not adherent to what's beneath it. Actually, the arachnoid matter has flowing beneath it the cerebrospinal fluid. So cerebrospinal fluid flows where? Underneath the arachnoid matter, underneath that web-like diaphanous drapery that covers the brain. Now, the brain tissue itself has a surface, just like all the organs of the body have a skin. The skin of the brain is the final meningeal layer. And it's, well, I'm going to use a different color, huh? We'll use this one. We'll sit, we're going to call this one the pia, the pia mater. So the pia mater, pia means soft or gentle or delicate. So the pia mater is the delicate stuff as opposed to the tough stuff. Now the pia mater, now's where we start getting into the, into the gyri uh, and the shapeliness of the gyre, gyre and the sulci of the brain. So this is the worst brain drawing in the world. But you get the idea that the squiggles, the surface of the brain, the gyre, the gyrating squiggles, and the sulci, the invaginations between the gyre, are lined in pia mater. So the skin of your brain is the pia mater. But the thing is, as a dissector, I can't cut it. I can push my finger through it. It's only two or three cells thick of connective tissue creating a surface membrane uh, of, of your brain matter. So the pia mater is distinct among the membranes in that it's undissectable with a knife. When you're looking at a brain <laughs> and the dura has been removed and the arachnoid has been removed and you're looking at the brain tissue itself, you're looking at the pia. And you could push your finger through it because it's soft. So Brain Basics Part 1, Membranes. The meninges include the periosteal dura mater, the meningeal dura mater, between which flow the venous blood return from the brain. Adherent to that is the arachnoid matter beneath which flows the cerebrospinal fluid between the arachnoid matter and the pia mater, which pia mater is the surface or skin of the brain only two or three cells thick and undissectable. I hope that's a helpful introduction to you of the meninges of the brain as we start a conversation about brain basics. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to study more with me, go to gilheadley.com. There's a ton of stuff there. Enjoy.